Hello everyone. I am Professor Uma Kanjilal, Pro Vice Chancellor, Indira Gandhi National Open University. Today I will be talking about ICT in education vis-a-vis -vis NEP 2020. The National Education Policy 2020 is seen as a game changer for the entire education center in the country. It has laid special focus on the use of technology in teaching learning process for which nationwide implementation plans are on. The policy emphasizes on online learning with proper support of digital infrastructure and bridging the present digital gap. Technology is envisaged to be the main driving force in the education scenario. Today's learners are digital natives at ease with the mobile and computing devices and look for information on the internet. Key trends emerging last decade across the global higher education sector are open educational resources. We have today a huge repository of open educational resources developed over the years across disciplines at all levels of higher education under the National Mission on Education through ICT initiative of the Ministry of Education. And the best part is that these are all available under open license CC by SA. The second major development is massive open online courses in India, which is characterized by a vast disparity of educational facilities available across the country. India MOOCs, that is, SWAM, was initiated in 2016 to provide just-in-time quality education to heterogeneous learner community. Virtual reality and virtual worlds are, is another development that is changing the whole scenario. Today we talk about augmented reality, uh, something like second life kind of a platform, virtual labs, robotics, these are some of the applications getting popularized in the education context. The fourth major development is artificial intelligence use in education. AI is directly influencing education and learning sciences, especially in the area of intelligent tutoring systems, personalized learning, AI tutor, teaching assistant, adaptive learning approaches, natural language processing, chatbots, or conversational AI, big data, then educational data mining, etc. Most of the learning management systems and MOOCs platform are having these features and are being extensively used for online virtual learning environment. The fifth development is of Internet of Things. Its use in education can have great impact in teaching learning process. It can be used for interactive learning by creating smart lesson plans using different types of educational labs and help in creating smart classroom environment. Personalized and customized lesson plans can be designed based on individual learning styles by capturing data from different devices. From security point of view, it can help in tracking learners capturing data through wearable devices. The sixth major development is in the blockchain technology. In educational context, it can improve record keeping and maintenance of degrees, diplomas and certificates. It can help in verification of transcripts, provide seamless payment transactions for students fees, etc. It can be appropriately used for academic bank of credits proposed in the NEP 2020. It is already being used in digital distribution of degrees certificates which are non-temperable and verifiable from anywhere in the world. NEP 2020 encourages use of new technologies such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain, smart boards, handheld devices, so and so forth for effective learning practices. Some of the technologies are already in use by many educational institutions as has been initiated by the National Mission on Education through ICT. But the latest technologies like AI, machine learning, blockchain are yet to be tested for large-scale implementation. This requires extensive research both from technology and education context. Online virtual education as an alternative delivery mode can fulfill the objectives like Increase access to basic education, skill-based education, and lifelong learning, both formal and non-formal. Enhance the quality of teaching and learning to improve relevance and effectiveness of basic education. Expand 
distance learning opportunities especially for disadvantaged groups in remote areas. Section 24 of NEP 2020 has given emphasis on equitable use of technology in the context of online and digital education. The policy recommends the key initiatives like series of pilot studies to be conducted for online education, invest in creation of open, interoperable, evolvable public digital infrastructure for building robust digital infrastructure, appropriate existing e-learning platforms such as Swayam, Diksha to be extended to provide teachers with an online teaching platform and tools, developing engaging e-content including games, simulations, augmented reality, virtual reality, etc. Extending virtual labs by leveraging existing e-learning platforms such as Diksha, Swayam and Swayam Prabha. Addressing the digital divide issues through appropriate technology infrastructure and extensive use of mass media such as television, radio and community radio to make content available 24 by 7 in different languages to cater to heterogeneous learner community. Then it talks about capacity building of teachers on learner-centric pedagogy and high-quality online content creation using online teaching platform and tools. Then proper online assessment mechanisms to be developed by appropriate bodies like National Assessment Center or Parag, school boards, NTA, etc., which will entail design and implementation of assessment frameworks encompassing design of competencies, portfolio, rubrics, standardized assessment and assessment analytics. Setting up of National Education Technology Forum for exchange of ideas on the use of technology to enhance learning and laying down standards is another major recommendation of NEP 2020. Now, if we look at actually a lot of activities in terms of ICT in education has been happening over the years. A lot of e-content got generated over the years. A very good example is the NPTEL where we have 1000 plus web and video courses available. For the UG level e-content, 87 disciplines content has been developed by CEC. Then we have PG level e-content developed in 77 disciplines under the EPG Partshala project by UGC. Then we have thousands of spoken tutorials made available by IIT Bombay. Then we have virtual labs developed by IIT Delhi where you have more than 1000 uh, experiments available in simulated environment. Then there are many other such specialized e-content developed in different uh, disciplines in fact. And the best part is that all these contents are available under OER under the CC by SA licenses. I would like to bring to your notice another major initiative of uh, Ministry of Education that is the National Digital Library of India. This is seen as a discovery tool because a lot of content that got generated over the years, the NDLI actually tries to consolidate them and search them in a very user-friendly interface. Then talking about online courses, I think the major initiative that needs mention is the NPTEL online courses. This started somewhere in 2014 and we have actually uh, 1600 courses already available on the portal and it's very very popular among the learners and millions of learners have been enrolling and certificates have been issued on this. Uh, this got also uh, in fact uh, uh, integrated with the uh, national platform that is Swayam. In fact Swayam in short form for study webs of active learning for young aspiring minds. Uh, the best part is this, the SWAM platform is indigenously made uh, and it has developed on three cardinal principles of education policy that is access, equity and quality. We have curriculum based MOOCs right from standard 9 in schools to PG level courses and this is being developed and delivered by best of the teachers across the country and this is in fact uh, operation since 2016. Uh, there are nine partners for SWAM. We have UGC offering the PG level courses, NPTEL offering technical courses in UG and PG level, so, uh, communication for education that is CEC offering undergraduate programs, IGNU providing courses in diploma and certificate levels, 
AICT offering foreign university courses and many other things that do not go into the kitty of other partners. Then NCRT and NIS offering courses at the school level. I am Bangalore especially for management courses and Nita Chennai for teacher training programs. As on date, if you look into the statistics, in fact, till date, total courses developed, that is the unique courses that somewhere around 2,598, total courses delivered uh, that is listed on the SOAM platform is more than 8,000. We have total enrollment since the beginning, 2.76 crores. Total universities approved credit transfer happened is 159 and total certificates issued till date is 11.66 lakhs. And in fact, in the July session, more than 900 courses are being offered on the SOAM platform. Another interesting thing is the SOAM platform is being used for offering complete online programs also and this is known as second vertical of SOAM. Uh, the interesting thing is uh, in the SOAM we follow a four quadrant approach which is very unique and not uh, I mean uh, available in any other MOOC platform. The first quadrant gives emphasis on high quality video lectures, multimedia instructions by special uh, subject matter experts. The second quadrant is e-content self-instructional material. It could include e-books, OERs, open access material. Third quadrant is assessment, which covers assignments, quizzes, problems, solutions. And the fourth quadrant is the discussion forum for raising doubt, uh, clarifying them on near real-time basis. Apart from that, uh, another emphasis is given providing uh, transcript for each of the video lectures which is then translated into 12 Indian languages. And the completion of the course is through term and examination conducted by National Testing Agency. The certification, if a student is interested, overall the course is free, but if a student is interested for a certificate or a credit for that course, then they have to go through an exam process and the evaluation methodology is follows the accepted norms that is prescribed in CVCS or any other systems that are followed by UGC, AICT, etc. And the credit-based courses requires the semester term and examination, which is a proctored examination conducted nationwide through exam partners like NTA. And then learners can get a certificate after they have registered for written the exam and successfully cleared it. And online assignment quizzes may carry weightage in final consolidated school. In fact, the best part is this, the certificate that is issued is actually validated in a sense that the host institution issues the certificate with the signature of the controller of exam or in case of uh, or some registrar of examination. The importance of this credits of SWEM, uh, one can see from the fact that it offers credit transfer. In fact, Gazette notification was first issued in 2016, which talked about 20% of credit transfer. And then this was followed by uh, last year, we had in 2021, another new uh, Gazette notification, which says that now 40% of the courses can be used for accruing your degree, towards your degree. So, which means that now in every semester, students can pick up 40% of the courses from the SOEM platform and can ask the credits to be transferred towards their degree, diplomas, whatever it is. So, it has a complete framework for credit mobility in place. And in fact, this is now getting included in the ABC portal, that is the Academic Bank of Credits where all the credits that are earned through the SWAM platform can be used for purpose of the degree and diplomas. In fact, the institutions are now being asked to get registered on the ABC portal. And in fact, uh, the process is on registering the students on the SWAM portal and the, each and every student who are interested to earn credits from SWAM will need to first register on the ABC portal and then they can ask for the credit transfer through the ABC portal itself. Another major project I would like to mention about Ministry of Education, that is the SWAM Prabha. At present, we have 34 educational channels in that, and it is actually based on India's communication satellite, that is GSAT-15. In fact, there were 24 transponders on GSAT-15, 
of which two were allotted specially for the purpose of uh, Swayam Prabha. And this is actually these channels, if you see, they are running 24 by 7. And uh, the test run started somewhere in 2016. But the formal launch of this, all the channels were done in 2017. Now, in fact, there is a major effort towards extending these channels, 34 channels into 60 channels. And this all channels at the moment we have uh, of the 34 channels, 12 channels are for the school level. But uh, in future, in fact, you will be having 60 channels for higher education because a major initiative has come where 200 channels are being allotted to the school sector. And that was announced in this budget, this year's budget. In fact, the whole objective of this DTA channels, this is to provide equal access provide curriculum based courses and that's for higher education at the moment it's covering school education but in future so M Prabha will be exclusively for the purpose of higher education and this provides also a platform for live classes and there is a channel also for competitive exam preparation. The partners in Swayam Prabha we have BISAC which is actually providing the uplinking facility. Uh, the satellite has been provided by Department of Space. Then Inflipnet is actually maintaining the portal of the Swayam Prabha. And major partner in this whole process is the content uh, providers, that is NPTEL, IITs, UGC, CEC, IGNU, NCIT and NIOS. These channels are basically meant for DD Fresh Dish, but they are also available on Dish TV, Geo TV, YouTube and also there is a special mobile app for it. If you look into the portal of Swayam Prabha, you will at the moment find there is a special distinction between higher education and school education. But I think uh, as the developments that are happening in future, Swayam Prabha will be exclusively for higher education and the uh, 200 channels that are coming up, it will be for school education. If you look into the Swayam Prabha portal, in fact, the basic features is that it has facility of, I mean, you can look into the program schedule, you can have access to the archival videos, you can give your feedback on this, and it has the facility of searching and uh, browsing for the videos that you are looking in for. If you are interested to uh, go in for the archived videos, you can actually access it through uh, your mobile phone using QR code, or you can directly on the website go through the YouTube channel, in fact. The major initiative that is being now taken up is also using the Swayam Prabha channels for offering live sessions in regional languages. IGNU, for instance, has already started using its four channels and in fact, uh, every day 13 hours of live classes are being taken for major courses in social sciences and these are available in 13 languages at the moment. Another project that I would like to especially mentioned is the Samarth portal. This is another initiative of Ministry of Education. It is designed and developed by Delhi University. And this is again a project under the National Mission on Education through ICT. The whole idea of the Samarth portal is that it is an open source, open standard enabled, robust, secure, scalable and evolutionary process automation engine for university and higher education institution. It is designed for various uh, higher education institutions across India to help them to migrate from paper unreliable third party ERP systems to systems that is more secure, reliable and scalable. It has in fact nine essential packages, 40 plus Samarth modules are available and at the moment 40 plus central universities are using the services which actually provides a 100% automation engine for universities. But this is one portal where actually major emphasis is being given by the ministry that this will be now extended to all the universities across the country, not just limited to the central universities, which will actually help in solving the requirement of ERP solution by the higher education institutions. Now, if we come to the section 23.3 of NEP 2020, there is a mention of creation of an autonomous body national education technology forum netf in short as a platform for free exchange of ideas on the use of technology to enhance learning assessment planning administration etc expected roles of uh, netf are seen as leveraging technology 
providing a platform for providing access to technology and ICT enabled education cover different dimensions of education and training of teachers to make them skilled uh, to teach with modern technology, take care of the issues like bandwidth, infrastructure required for technology enabled services, availability of devices and providing user friendly ecosystem. NETF is also expected to make suitable provisions for assessment of the students to be eased. All possible issues related to online assessment and evaluation of the examinations, assignments and other such inputs by the students are to be addressed. The major areas on which the NETF needs to focus on are ICT infrastructure that is to provide subsidized connectivity, shared data center services, cloud computing under SAS, PaaS or IS, low cost access devices, smart cast looms, then e-content development and use, digitized and preservation of available content, pedagogy based on e-content development, accessibility in terms of facilities to be provided for the differently challenged, language barrier, etc. Promoting use of OER based online courses, standards and interpretary issues. This all needs to be addressed. Then in terms of e-resources to support education, training and research, it needs to promote open access with support for developing institutional repositories, open access journals and ETDs, negotiating for national licensing for popular journals, reaching wider community through subject specific consortia and library networks, working on standards for indexing and harvesting of metadata and supporting development of search tools for knowledge discovery. In terms of ICT integration in education system, the NETF needs to facilitate uh, e-learning, blended learning, MOOCs, lifelong learning, face-to-face -face learning and skill training. Operational issues related to virtual university net framework needs to be addressed. In terms of the e-governance, I think support is needed for development and implementation of ERP or university management system for educational institutions and improving administrative processes through automation. And in fact, I mentioned about summer, this needs to be actually scaled up to a great extent. Then talking about ICT competencies and capacity building for different stakeholders, I think a support is required for digital literacy and information literacy programs, training in e-content development and online delivery of programs by the teachers. Once we have NETF established, it is expected that it will go a long way in supporting digital initiatives of higher education institutions in the country. Another initiative I would like to mention here, that is the National Digital Education Architecture. In fact, if you look into the vision statement of NDER, it says a globally pioneering effort in education, a unifying national digital infrastructure to energize and catalyze the education ecosystem. NDER aims to create and deliver diverse, relevant, contextual, innovative solutions that benefit students, teachers, parents, communities, administrators and results in timely implementation of policy goals. I, already we have NDER in the school sector, but now it is actually now upgraded for the higher education institutions and activities are on for this going on. In fact, recently this uh, Union Budget 2022, you saw the announcement for the education and skilling sector focused on setting up of digital university to expand reach, improve quality education, build capacity and strengthen the digital education ecosystem. The digital university mandate talks of raising the current cross enrollment ratio of 27.1 to 50 percent in higher education by the year 2035. No upper cap on number of seats and number of online programs that are to be offered. Anyone who has passed class 12 would be eligible for admission. Universal education without dislocation, providing concerned learners are equipped for digital learning. Faculty development and opportunities to bridge the gaps in faculty development. Enrollment in SEDGS, employability enhancement skills, formal and non-formal recognizing prior learning, etc. Quality education accessible for all through remote learning, reaching out to students belonging to rural, remote areas. 
the course will be multilingual in fact all regional languages are expected to be covered and which will further enhance the inclusivity of students in fact with shortage of infrastructure and teaching faculty it is important that we harness the potential of technology to democratize education and reaching out to the masses through a collaborative platform the swam initiative of the moe has already made an impact and this needs to be further strengthened with advanced tools like artificial intelligence augmented reality virtual reality internet of things blockchain technology etc for last mile connectivity and maximizing reach swam prabha channels can play a major role in enhancing learning and the channels need to be strengthened with latest technology to provide world class engaging interactive content over the years major content have been developed across disciplines and also nptel online courses swam and swam prabha projects further enhance the teaching learning process all the efforts now need to be consolidated and integrated to provide effective learning solution for digital and online learning environment thank you very much